honor her memory, her work, her legacy. We've come this day, God, to give your name all the praise, honor, and glory. We've come today to lift up scriptures and to sing songs. We've come to hear the preached word. We've come to sit together heart to heart and breast to breast as we celebrate Sister Mazik. So God, we pray that you would allow any feelings of sadness to be transformed by the end of this worship experience into expressions of gladness as we celebrate one who has received her crown. So God, we pray that you would use us in every way possible so that her memory may be honored and that your name may be lifted up. And it's in the wonderful, marvelous, and matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. 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 Saints, we have come to celebrate today. Celebrate a woman who lived a beautifully remarkable life. A life of service and a life of love. And so we would ask that you would join us in this celebration by standing as we sing our hymn of praise, Blessed Assurance. The words are in your funeral program. Won't you stand now, all except for the family? Thank you. 
presence of the Lord. It is my understanding that uh, the Crawleys are supposed to be reading a man. They encountered some traffic. I encountered three accidents on my way here this morning, so we thank God that they were able to make it. Amen. And if you're able to catch your breath, we're going to invite you now to come and to share in our Old Testament and New Testament readings. God has perfect timing, amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Um, it'll be Psalm 118, verses 1 through 4, and verses 19 through 24. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Yes. Let Israelite, Israel, I'm sorry. Let Israel now say his mercy endures forever. Yes. Let the house of Aaron now say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, now say his mercy endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. But I will praise you for you have answered me and have, I'm sorry, have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Woo, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Amen. Amen. God's word is already blessed. sister's helping me out. <laughs> Good morning. I will be reading. Well, you already see what I'm going to be reading, so I'm just going to read it. <laughs> Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses one through eight. For we know that if we, our earthly house of this tabernacle, were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so we, I'm sorry, if so be, that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in the tes this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, oh Jesus, <laughs> but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 
God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. I invite the Reverend Wanda Polite to come and lead us in our prayer of comfort this morning. We know that some of Sister Mazik's family are viewing this service via live stream. And it's my prayer that this prayer of comfort will not only cover those of us who are in the sanctuary, but those of us who are viewing this via live stream in the virtual space. Amen. And so we would invite Reverend Polite to come at this time. Amen. Praise God. We've already heard this is the day that the Lord has made, amen? amen. We've already heard Sister Mozique's favorite scripture. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, amen? amen? So as we get ready to bow our heads and give God the thanks and the glory for her life, I ask that you all just let go of all your hurt for a moment and let God minister to your hearts because he is the comforter, amen? amen. amen. Martha Mozique. The merry, pleasant girl of today at Lomax, God chose to serve his people. Let us all have a Kanias experience, the power of God's presence. Make us all do right by all of his creation, because we all know that in Jesus, we can do everything and we are conquerors. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to say thank you for Mar Martha. We thank you for Martha that was child 13, Father, that made it in this world as a survivor, as a missionary, as a deaconess, as an usher, singing your praises, I assume daily, Father, because of her strength. We thank you for her light, Father God. Why do some of you ask for a prayer of comfort? I'm highlighting what she's done. Because that should comfort your souls. I shouldn't have to stand up here and say anything to comfort your souls. Martha's life should be comforting. When we think of how she served her Savior, Jesus Christ. How she came into church and out the church as a class leader to the families. I know Martha personally as someone that loved to serve God's creation. Father, and we thank you for that. And right now, Father, we ask that may the work that she's done speak for her. May the work that she's done comfort the soul of her family members. Father God, I just want to say a special prayer for her one and only living sister, Evelyn. Thank you for her traveling mercies from South Carolina on a rainy day to join us to lay her sister's body to rest, Father God. Father God, we thank you for her devoted niece, Pat, who's viewing live stream. We ask that you just touch her in whatever mindset she may be, to know that this is not a sad moment, always, but a glorious moment that her aunt lived to serve the Lord, Father God. Father God, we ask that you touch in our presence her goddaughter, Verdell, Father God. Touch her and let her know that this ache too shall pass, Father God. Father God, we ask that you touch Sister Joan, Father God, and let her know that all is well with Sister Martha's soul. And then, Father, we ask for her dear friend, Sister Gloria, that planned to be here, but because of the rain, thought it's safe to stay home. Touch her wherever she is and let her know she's thought of in this very moment, Father God. Father God, we ask that you comfort her Lomax family and let them know that Martha is all the comfort we need when we see her smiling face, her love, her charisma, her canaious experience. Wherever she was, we saw the power of you, Father God, and we thank you for sharing her with us. We ask, Father God, that while she's absent in body, we know that she's present with you, and that because of that, she has liberty. Father God, we just say thank you for this prayer of comfort. We ask that you comfort each and every person under the sound of my voice, be it live stream, may it be in the mindset, and we just say thank you, Father God, for ushering that life, Martha Mosique, to share with the Lomax family. In Jesus' name, I offer this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Worship experience, we want to first say thank you to Dr. Ann Smith, who is our musician today, for using her miracle, musical gifts for this person and this purpose. 
Um, we are now going to invite Sister Betty Carter to come, who will give us a musical selection. He did a lot. I say to my family today, I love y'all. And um, we're kind of rushed this morning, so bear with us. Um, he's going to try to play the music for me, and uh, we're going to see what we can do, okay? Amen. How many glad to be alive this morning? Amen. Okay. See, Martha's got there. We got to get there. So let's just praise him, okay? Amen. Why? Should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? For Jesus is my portion. Constant friend is he. Oh, his eye, his own, the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm a happy. I sing because I am free. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. You know I sing, I've got to sing, because I'm a happy, Lord I sing, because I'm free, oh, his eye, his own, the spirit. And I know he watches. I know he watches. I know he watches me. Y'all give God a praise. In spite, in spite of. Do you sing because you're happy? Do you sing because you're free? Sing it with me. I sing because I'm a happy. Lord, I sing because I'm free. And I know he watches me. I do know that our plan B is always God's plan A. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 At this time, we would invite Sister Brenda Cox to come and to share some acknowledgments. Good morning. Good morning. The Mazik family would have you to know that they are deeply appreciative of each and every acknowledgement that has come, an expression of sympathy that has come their way during their hour of bereavement, and they would 
have you to accept this acknowledgement until they can contact you in a more tangible way in the near future. And they have selected a few cards to be shared with you at this time. Am I doing something wrong? Okay. okay. The first one reads, as you honor your loved one, take heart in the stories and memories, in the laughter and love, in the tears and hugs. Take heart in the celebration of a life well lived and a person much loved with sincere sympathy. Miss Martha was both a dedicated usher and deaconess. She was always ready to serve. She will be truly missed. You are in our prayers. Ray and Denise Pincham. Thinking of you in this time of sorrow, to the family of Miss Martha Mazie, and asking God to surround you with his perfect peace and love, prayerfully yours, Felicia Massenburg, Lomax AME Zion Church. There are two letters from Lomax. To the family of the late deaconess Martha Ann Mazik. The Deaconess Board of the Lomax AME Zion Church offers our deepest condolences on the loss of Deaconess Martha Ann Mazik. Deaconess Mazik was a very faithful and active member here at Lomax and a dedicated deaconess. She served faithfully on the Deaconess Board for many years until her failing, the failing of her health. There's a vacancy that will be faced but there is no void, for the memory she leaves behind will last forever. Martha Mazik was a very faithful servant and worked diligently in her service as a deaconess, other ministries, and unto her Lord. I could always count on Deaconess Martha to know the correct par pyramid colors and would make sure the ministry had the latest calendar of the liturgical colors. She will be greatly missed by all who had the pleasure of working with her on the Deaconess Board and other ministries. The memories she leaves behind will live within us all our lives. Please continue to cherish the wonderful memories and times you spent with her. We will continue to pray for your peace and comfort. Know that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. If the Deaconess Board can be of assistance to you in any way, Please do not hesitate to call upon us. Please accept our most heartfelt sympathies for the loss of your sister and aunt. Our thoughts are with you and your family during this difficult time. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.8 Yours in Christ, Denise A. Pincham, President of the Deaconess Board. And our church, letter, our church letter to the family of the late Martha Mazik. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Exodus 23:20. 20. The officers and members of the Lomax African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church were deeply saddened to hear the passing of our beloved member Martha Mazik. Martha's membership at Lomax spanned decades. During that time, she proved herself to be a very genial, dedicated member in our presence. It would be an understatement to say that Lomax was a very significant part of her life. Through the years, she was de a dedicated member of the Deaconess and Class Leaders Boards, the Voices of Zion and the Sanctuary Choirs, the Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society, including the Life Members Council and the Lay Council. She was also an active participant in the Lomax Senior Ministry until her health began to fail. Martha took each of her memberships very seriously and was always here to provide whatever support was needed. One of our young men that she mentored upon hearing of her passing commented on the fond memories that he has of the interactions that he had with her through the years. And that was Fred Peter Bach, okay? As we of the household of faith believe that we serve a God who makes no mistakes, we bow in humble submission to his will. Although we will miss Martha's presence among us, 
we take solace in knowing that she is now at home with her Father in heaven. In the days to come, as you adjust to life without Martha's presence, please know that you will continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. We stand ready to assist you in whatever your need may be. As Martha leaves a powerful legacy at the Lomax Amy Zion Church, we say, life's race well run, life's work well done, life's victory won, now cometh rest. Yes. Done by the order of the Lomax AME Zion Church, the Reverend Dr. Adrian V. Nelson, pastor. And just as a personal note, I try not to say this, but I have to, today is raining, but you know there's a myth that says that when a, it rains on a corpse, that's how I noticed that their spirit has entered into the gates of heaven. And I had to play, share that with you today. Thank you. Amen. Well, Sister Cox, with that explanation of the rain, with all the rain that we've had, <laughs> Sister Mazik went in triumphantly, amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 At this time, we will um, have some acknowledge, um, some tributes as listed in our funeral program. Um, before we have those tributes, I would ask that we would just first have um, those members of our Deaconess Board who are present to stand, mm -hmm. who had the previous Tribute, we would ask our Deaconess Board to stand. Amen. Thank you for your presence and all that you have done to make today possible. We also want to acknowledge um, those members of our Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society who are also here. There will be a tribute uh, by video from the parent body president, Sister Donna Ganey, but we would ask that all of our, de all of our uh, missionaries would stand as well. And we want to let you know that there was another missionary activity going on this morning, and so some were there and some are here, but we're thankful for your presence to support your sister, amen? amen. We're going to add one additional tribute on this list of tributes. Uh, we're going to ask first that the representative from the Jolly Hearts would come, um, followed by um, Sister Gloria Camp, class leader for class number five followed by the video presentation from Sister Donna Ganey, and then the family representative, Reverend Edward Capers. Um, and Reverend Capers, when you come, you may certainly come here to the lectern. Uh, we would um, ask that everybody be reminded to try to keep it to two or three minutes, amen, except for the family. If you would come now. First, giving all honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To the pastor of this church, Reverend Nelson, pulpit associates, and all those assembled. I am a member of the Jolly Hearts Club. Unfortunately, our president could not be here because she had flooding at her house, and she called me this morning to speak. I would like for all of the Jolly Hearts members to stand. Thank you. You may be seated. Miss Martha was one of the longest, mem longest members in longevity as a member of the Jolly Heart Social Club. When I was working, I looked forward to joining the Jolly Hearts Club just because of the wonderful name. And I became a member, and I was fortunate enough to meet Miss Martha. And she had such a wonderful, kind spirit. Her spirit radiated. And we were fortunate enough that when she transitioned to Manicare, the club members would go sometime individually, and sometime we would go have lunch with her. And what a joy that was. It was heart-wrenching when we got the word that she had transitioned. And I thought to myself, We've dropped the two L's in Jolly, but she's got joy Amen. because she is with Jesus. Amen. She's with her Savior, and she lived her life with a spirit, a willingness to do whatever she could. She had a kind, sweet spirit. She was soft-spoken, and if you ask her to do anything, 
she was willing to do it. We found out that she loved Aunt's potato chips. And when we had lunch with her, the president would pick up uh, Popeye's chicken. But the president told me today that one day Miss Martha quietly told her, I really like Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> But she didn't complain and ask us to change the chicken. We continued to uh, do what we did. But when I was able to visit with her by myself, it was, I felt like I was blessed. Because as I said, the radiation. So I leave you with something I thought about this morning when I got that call. And I said, where, where can I find Miss Martha in the Bible? But you know she's in the Bible, but I thought of her sweet spirit. So I thought of the gifts that she's brought to us. And I went to Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. Miss Martha had radiated love and joy and peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. I'm sure there were moments where she could have felt unhappy about any something, but she never showed it to us. So I leave you with a song that I thought about that I thought radiated about her. And it is, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. God bless you and live in Jesus' joy as you remember Miss Martha. First of all, I'd like to say I wasn't told about the two-minute time thing. She just asked me to give her collection, so um, I'm going to be past two minutes, so forgive me. Good morning. On behalf of class number five, I would like to express our deepest condolences to the family of the late Mrs. Martha Mazik. You are in our prayers. About Martha, Martha was a woman of God. Can a person represent all nine fruits of the spirit? Think with this, on this with, for a moment, sorry. From Galatians 5, 22, 23, 25. In Martha, we saw love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law dealing with these things. If the Spirit is the source of life, let the Spirit also direct our course. Martha's life was guided by the harvest of the Spirit. Martha loved the Lord her God with all her being. As one develops a relationship with a rare find like Martha, one becomes a protector of source. The little things mattered, like walking her safely across the street at the church and watching her climb all those steps to her door, getting her connected with the county and dental services she needed, thanks Brenda and Wanda, picking her up for manicure and bringing her to church, Cliff, Ruthie, D. Bird, and maybe others too, or speaking loudly when someone called her Mazik, we would all say it's Mazik. When I relocated to San Antonio, Texas in 2011 for two years and then on to Atlanta for a year, Martha never let distance hinder her duties to me as a class leader. She would call and say, I could always hear the smile in her voice. She would say, Gloria, this is Martha. How you doing down there? Our protective nature and love of Martha conveyed to the staff at Manicare that Martha was a resident at Manicare because of her circumstances, but she was not alone, and that she is loved and she is somebody. Martha was an exemplary class leader. As her health began to fail and limited her ability to serve effectively, 
She was persistent and continued to call her class members often from her bed at Manicare. When Mrs. Pincham asked me to assist Martha with class number five, I prayed about it and said yes. I was confident in assisting because I had observed how Martha led class number five with grace and distinction. Gloria Adams of Medicare arranged for us to have our first brown bag luncheon with Martha in the activity room, much to the chagrin of other residents. Once while Linda Campbell and I were visiting Martha, we observed that there was still no dress on her side of the room. So Linda Campbell and I, or maybe just Linda, decided to remedy this this day. She, we, she and I drug a dresser from the other side of the room, assisted by two women who were visiting their mother, who appeared to be in full agreement of our effort. Girl power was in full effect that day. Martha deserved a complete room. Martha was somebody. Martha was loved. We held an 89th birthday party for Martha here at the church, which she could not attend due to, due to a fall. Following the celebration, Linda Campbell and I visited with her at Medicare and shared the details of the wonderful celebration that was held in her honor. She was pleased, but a little sad too, that she missed the party. Now to be outdone, Linda Campbell, Linda Campbell dressed her up in her new birthday outfit, put her crown on her head, decorated her room, took pictures of her and opened her cards and read them all to her. With this, Martha had a private celebration on the same day. Plans were in the works to celebrate with Martha on April 15, 2022, for her 93rd birthday. April 15th is another reason Martha was dear to my heart. She shared a birthday with my mother. Tax day, who could forget, right? right. Martha was somebody, Martha was loved. As time passed, there was a point that Martha gave us cause for concern. We had to encourage her to eat, to chew, swallow your food, drink, and as we did, Martha would mock us. Hey, Martha, eat your food, drink your milk. She had a unique sense of humor. Martha had this black purse that she kept with her in a wheelchair. This purse contained food, napkins, cutlery, but no money. Martha was always asking Pat for money because she said she had to pay someone who no one knew. Once when Mary Steele was visiting with Martha, with Martha, Mary asked Martha if she had any money in that purse. Her response was, nope, I need some money. Mary gave her $2. This gesture made Martha very happy. Martha was somebody. Martha was loved. Then came the pandemic. We urged Pat to call Medicare often to get an update on the conditions at the facility, and she did. Pat kept us informed of what was happening with Martha during the shutdown at the facility. Once, Mrs. Sellers and I called to get an update, but to no avail because we were not family. As you can see, Martha had a lot of protectors, or I have a lot of partners in crime, I'm not sure. <laughs> After the vaccine became available, all the and all the residents were fully vaxxed and boosted. The facility opened its doors again for visitations by appointment only. Mrs. Pincham and I visited together with ex excitement in our spirits at the thought of laying eyes on Martha again after two years. Upon our arrival, we observed others interacting with their loved ones from outside looking in and waving at them through windows. As we checked in, the attendant brought Martha down to the dining room for our visit. We stayed six feet apart and we were so happy to see Martha. We could hear the smile in her voice when she said hello. She was joyful when we mentioned Lomax saying, that's my church. Amen. Martha loved to sing and we had the whole room to ourselves and we did just that. We asked Martha to pull her mask down so we could get a good picture of her. As she did, her sense of humor was still apparent. She stuck her tongue out at us and burst out in laughter. That was Martha, she was somebody, she was loved. I want to thank the staff and management of Manicare for the love and care they provided to Martha during her stay. My last visit with Martha was happy and surprising. Pat and Martha were sharing a room at this point. I was overjoyed to see Martha eating her lunch. She was really eating, yum yum. The surprising part of the visit was she was watching this movie Creed on her TV. I haven't watched that movie yet. She was really into the movie. I asked her a question, I said, Martha, you like boxing? Without even looking up or away from the TV screen, she nodded her head, yes, in a manner as to say, you're interrupting my groove. So I stopped asking questions. 
As always, before leaving, we recited the Lord's Prayer and Pat joined in. Martha was somebody, Martha was loved. To the family, I am very honored to have had the opportunity to know and love Mrs. Martha Mazik, but it was an even greater honor for me to have been mentored by her. I am forever grateful for the lessons learned. Would the members of class number five please stand? And I know we have some watching online, probably Ms. G, Wanda Richardson, and Sandy Kelly also. Ms. Shirley, Ms. Bailey, will you sure. stand? Family, please know we stand today in love and memory of one who served us with grace, quiet dignity, respect, and love for all. We will truly miss Mrs. Martha Mazik, but we will carry her, her memory in our hearts forever. Family, please know that Martha loved Lomax, and we loved and cared for Martha the best way we could. We were visible, we were present, and we gave her love. At the end of our visits, we would always pray the Lord's Prayer or recite the 23rd Psalm. As we left the room, Martha would always say, be good. For me, the message was, come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Develop a relationship with him as she did. Treat others with respect. Stay connected to the Savior. Family, in the words of Mrs. Martha Mazik, on behalf of class number five, I say, be good, be blessed, be kind. Thank you for the time to share my reflection. Respectfully, in love, Gloria H. Camp, class leader number five. Thank you. Before we have the uh, video from Sister Ganey, now I want you all to see what I deal with in terms of who's in charge around here and the partners in crime. That was a beautiful, beautiful tribute. Um, and uh, Dr. Hargrove, you really just need to give the benediction now. <laughs> but it was important for us to hear that. Um, and it, it said so much about who Sister Mazik was. So we thank you for your tribute and for all that you did to care for her as her class leader. Amen. And now we're gonna ask if you would play the video from Sister Ganey and it will be followed by the tribute. Good morning, Good morning. to the family of the late We were sad to hear her transition, transition, but we know that God is in control. control. And you will be needed by his care. care. To know Michelle and Martha loved and loved her because she because was a sincere, purposeful, and purposeful in everything, in everything she did. She did. Missionary Martha was a spiritual woman. She moved she about quiet when the days of time stood when called upon and when no one, no one else would. would. Missionary, Missionary Martha had so many flaws, and the qualities that she was working for were peace, for peace compassion, 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 honesty, honesty and support. Proverbs 31, 25, 27, in our United States. She is cold with strength and dignity. She can laugh as days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not bring a great I want to say that one more time. Missionary Mark did not bring a great I want to share with you the of, 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 of a song that was written by artist A.A. Missionary Martha was a woman who walked in God's love. She reflected the beauty of the Father above. She was not defeated by the things most men found tough. A woman of good character. A woman who symbolized the goodness of God's excellence. A woman who prayed. She walked the Lord, shouted, show me the way of God. I'm talking about a woman that is baptized in the river. I'm talking about a woman who is magnificent in the boat. I'm talking about a woman who is blessed. I'm talking about a woman who is blessed. A woman who is blessed. A woman who is blessed. I'm talking about a woman who is blessed. I'm talking about a woman who is blessed. I'm talking about a woman who is blessed. Angela, Angela, we will miss we will our miss missionary, our missionary, Martha. missionary Martha. And we will be and checking in on you. And if there is anything that the missionary, the missionary can do, can do to, to ease the, the birth in the next days, in the next, days, days, in the next in weeks, in the next, in the next months, months, just let just us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. To the angel of this house and the one Reverend Dr. Nelson, his wife. Um, as a pastor, I take great pleasure in sitting on this side of the pulpit. Amen. So thank you for the invitation, Pastor. But um, when we get a chance, it's nice to be on this side. Um, our Aunt Martha is a strong woman. Very strong. When they asked me to speak, I said, I don't want to. You know, when those guys who cry a lot, they call me a waterhead. <laughs> but I can say this. She was a strong woman. Loving but strong. I remember me, I'm the youngest nephew. But yet we're all old, if you look at us. <laughs> It is one of the weirdest things I've seen in the family. We are nephew and nieces, but we're old. Because she was the 13th of 14 children. She was born in 1930. Let's give some history, folks. She was born during the Great Depression. If you know your history, if you, stu if you study in school, you know the Great Depression was a hard time. She was born before Social Security Administration that was established in 1935. See, one thing that people we have to do is know our history. Yeah. She was born before the Civil Rights Act of 1965. She was born before the Voting Rights Act for women and men. She had a hard era to grow up in, but she wasn't angry about it. She wasn't upset about it. She enjoyed her lot in life. Yeah. She didn't have a whole lot, but she had you all. She had low Max and me. She loved you all. I used to kind of have a back and forth with her. After y'all and me, we Baptists. <laughs> she said, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> and the reality, we would laugh and we would say, you know what? There ain't no real difference between Baptists and me. <laughs> we just like to think there's a difference. I, I remember we'd take her to get her, oh, she liked to drink that juice. <laughs> we'd take her to BJ's and she said, I need mine sure. I gotta get mine sure. So one time I got the wrong flavor. She, she liked strawberry, I got chocolate. She looked at me, she said, you got to take this back. <laughs> but one thing my mother, she could do it so lovingly and so caring, and I said, you know what? I messed up, I'll take it back, get the right one for you. And I, and I did, because we know Martha was a loving person, but she was also honest. She didn't mind telling you the truth. And people always say the truth hurt, but sometimes it does. But when the person's right, they're right. And you can't deny that. But I, I thought it was difficult to do this today because she's the 13th or 14th. That leaves one out of 14 children. There's one left. That's a whole generation that is different from us. They're seeing hard times. Now we complain in this era about hard times. These folks saw hard times. They had less opportunities, less everything. So when you start complaining, think about what they went through. Yeah. They don't have the opportunities we have for jobs, education. Mm -hmm. Yes, it ain't a perfect world, but they had to deal with things we never had to deal with. Jim Crow laws. Yes. Now they may address them up and they still exist now, but we ain't had to deal with them like they had to deal with it. They had a FBI that was targeting people like us. Yeah. You had a government that targeted people like us. Yeah. So, you know, we need to know our history, folks. I stand here to give you a trip that because she was a, such a strong woman in our family. Those Mazik women are tough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we didn't dare men rise up on none of them. When they told us to do something, we did it because we know you don't want to go up against a Mazik woman. <laughs> All the men in my fight just said, they're so weak. These women tell them what to do. Look at them. Then one day I realized I knew why. Uh, they didn't play. And I thank God for these Mazik women because they showed us what it means to be respectful, loving, caring, encouraging, all the things we talked about, the fruit of the spirit. And I didn't want to read scriptures this Sunday. I just want to talk about all the Saturday, because it's Mother's Day tomorrow. 
I remember she lost Clyde in 2013. And we worried in the family how she would handle that. We said, oh my goodness. She lost the love of her life. He was only supposed to live six months, but he lived to be 50 something years old. And when she said to me, she said, you know what? This shows how, how much a believer of Christ. She said, you know what? I had him for all those years. The doctor said six months, but I had him for 50 something. See, me and Clyde are the same age, two weeks apart. I used to tease her about that. He was two weeks older than me. And, and those were the last two siblings, Evelyn and Martha, were sons born at the same time. How ironic is that? Well, like I said, I didn't know I'd be able to do this or not. But I thank God for your patience. Have a few moments for silent reading of the obituary. Um, we would ask, if possible, for the musician just to play softly. That will be followed by a sermonic selection, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is going to be sung by um, Brother Fred Peterbark Jr. It is a recording um, of him singing that song as he lives out of state, but he wanted to participate in this funeral today. So we thank him for that recording. And then that'll be followed by the eulogy, which will be brought to us by our own Reverend Dr. Monica Hargrove.
is his faithfulness. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. We have come to celebrate a life well lived. Somebody ought to say amen twice for that point. For the expressions have said it all this morning already. And you know, family, how much we love Sister Martha because you heard it through all the expressions, by word, by song, by prayer. And we are grateful for the opportunity to celebrate the life of Martha Mazik this day. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, who is the only Christ, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is my esteemed honor to be able to deliver words of eulogy today. So much has been said, and I don't feel like I have to say anything else about the life lived by Sister Martha, because you know that she was a deaconess, you know that she was an usher, you know that she was a missionary, you know that she served on class number five, you know that she was a class leader, you know that she was loved at Lomax, amen? And so we just want to celebrate her love. We want to celebrate her life, but we want to leave words behind for those who are left behind, amen? And today there is a word from the Lord. As I reflect on the life of Martha and her abiding faith in Jesus Christ, her helpful, loving, and giving spirit, I was led to re-examine the Martha we meet in the New Testament book of John. I dare say there's anyone here under the sound of my voice who has never met that Martha, because if you've been to any church service, you heard about Mary and Martha. I stand here to share words of life and hope from the gospel according to John that are found in a familiar passage from the believer's gospel, which just happens to be my favorite gospel, the gospel of John, about an encounter that Jesus had with a woman named Martha. The name Martha is primarily a female name of Hebrew origin. It means lady. And anybody who knew Martha knows that she was quite a lady that she was a lady who believed in God, that she was a lady who was favored by God, and she was a lady who was a servant of God. It is a familiar story involving the loss of a beloved brother of Martha and Mary and a dear friend of Jesus named Lazarus, and of Jesus' availability to restore life and hope to those sisters. I will share with you from select verses of this story found in the 11th chapter of Luke, hear ye these words from Luke verses 17 through 27 as recorded in the New Revised Standard Version. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. I know that he will rise. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe in this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And it is from this passage of scripture that I would ask that you consider as our subject for words of life to those of us left behind to cherish the life of Sister Martha Mazik, believe in Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus. who is the resurrection, the resurrection and, the life. and the life. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time of celebration. We thank you for this time of remembrance. Most of all, we thank you for your word that you have gifted us with for this occasion. Help us to 
eat the words that will be shared. Bless this eulogy, bless this family, bless those of us left behind that we might continue to walk in your way and acknowledge you as the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. We know from the story shared in the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John that Jesus had been called to aid Mary and Martha when their brother Lazarus died. We also know that Jesus was in another town when he received news of Lazarus's illness and that he did not return to Bethany to the home where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived until Lazarus had already died. We know that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days when Jesus arrived, but, beloved, Jesus came. Somebody might say Jesus was late. Jesus did not arrive on time, but somebody knows that when Jesus comes, he's always on time. It doesn't matter that it didn't meet our expectations of when he would show up. You see, no matter how grave a situation seems, Jesus will show up, and when he does, he is always on time, and he always gives hope, and he always leaves us better than we were before he got there. Even though many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother Lazarus, yet... No comfort was sufficient. No visitor could say anything to bring them a peace about the situation. But when Martha heard that Jesus was there, she couldn't wait for him to come to their place. She ran out to meet him. We read in verse 20 that when Martha heard Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Although in another story involving Jesus' visit at the home of Mary and Martha, he commended Mary for choosing to worship him and learn from him while Martha spent time cleaning and preparing a meal and serving him, we see in verse 20 of John 11 that Martha ventured out to meet Jesus. She was expecting about good news that he would have to share and about hope that he would offer. And so she ran out to fellowship with him and to show an outward sign of how much she had anticipated his arrival and that she needed to be in his presence. So much so that when she received news that he, when he was coming, that he was coming, she left to meet him when he was just on the way, when he was just on the road, when he might not have even been all the way in town yet. Perhaps you recall a time when you went to visit Martha. There have been some expressions remembering times when persons here visited Martha. When she lived in her house here on 24th Road or when she was at Manor Care. And you told her in advance that you were coming. And when you arrived, she met you and she opened the door. She welcomed you in. Even before you rang the doorbell when she was in her house or she was sitting in her wheelchair in the hallway near the nurse's station in anticipation of your visit. As excited as she might have been to receive you as a visitor, can you imagine how excited Martha must have been to see Christ visit her on April 11th? My, 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 what a time, what a time. We see in verse 21 that Martha's statement to Jesus once she saw him reflected an abiding faith in the power of Jesus to heal and restore life. Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus understood Martha's pain and grief in the death of Lazarus just as he understood the grief that Martha Mazik experienced in her loss of her only son, Clyde, in 2013. Jesus understood her fears over saying goodbye to Clyde, whom she loved with her whole heart, and whom she supported in sickness and in health, and yet she released him to God when he was called to his eternal home. For Martha Mazik knew that the same God who comforted her in the loss of Clyde was there to guide her to her eternal home. 
And Jesus' response to Martha's statement, the Martha in John 11, and I'm going to go back and forth to compare the Martha in John 11 with the Martha that we knew and loved so well here at Lomax, um, that she realized the close relationship that she shared with uh, Martha, I mean with, with Lazarus, as did Jesus. And Jesus assured Martha in John eleven twenty three 23, that your brother will rise again. And Martha's response to Jesus in verse 24 was, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. That reflects that Martha had heard and believed the teachings of Jesus and that she understood the promise of the resurrection of the dead to eternal life. Can't you imagine the excitement that Martha Mazik experienced when she heard Jesus say he had come for her and that she would rise again and her response to him that she knew she would rise again in the resurrection on the last day. No fear of Jesus, but a welcoming of him. Can you see it in your sanctified imagination and his promise of new life, a better life, one free of sickness, pain, limitations, one where she would be reunited with her beloved son, Clyde, and with Jesus himself, who is the resurrection and the life. Jesus' statements to Martha in verses 23, 25, and 26 are indeed as life-changing and heartwarming to us gathered here today as they were to Martha when Jesus stated, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe that, my brothers and sisters in Christ? When asked by Jesus if she believed what Jesus said, just stated, the Martha that Jesus encountered in John 11 readily professed her faith and belief in Jesus. For we read in verse 20, 27 that she responded, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Beloved, the Martha referenced in John chapter 11 was a woman of great faith and a true believer in Jesus, whether her brother's life was restored or not. Sorry about that. And Martha knew that Jesus was the resurrection and the life. She knew that he was the Messiah, the Son of God. She knew that Jesus was coming to the world sent by God the Father. What did Jesus mean and what can we understand in his great I am statement that Jesus is the resurrection and the light? Simply stated, Jesus told Martha and us that the dead shall live and the living shall never die. Death has been defeated which we celebrated on Easter Sunday not too many Sundays ago because Christ arose from the dead, triumphant with all power in his hands. Jesus is saying here that there is no life outside of him since accepting him as Lord and Savior is the only path or access to eternal life. Death has been defeated. The defeat of death was accomplished solely through the victory of Christ on the cross. Only those who believe in Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life will live today, tomorrow, and forever. For those who have accepted Christ, there is no defeat in death. For those who believe in him by God's grace through faith will have eternal life. Although we know that this biblical story ends with the restoration of the life of Lazarus by Jesus that day, we know that for Martha Mazik, her abiding faith in Jesus resulted in the beginning of everlasting life from April 11, 2022 through eternity. There is no end point on her life because her life goes on because she was a believer in Jesus as the resurrection and the life. On that day, she met Jesus. And he said to her, no more heartache, no more sickness, no more pain, Martha. No more medications to take. 
No more need for ongoing checking of vital signs. No more need to wear masks and socially distance or for continuous hand washing or use of hand sanitizer. No more need of a room or a bed or a wheelchair at Manor Care. Beloved Jesus spoke to Martha, the sister of Lazarus and Mary and said, I am the resurrection and the life. I have come to give you eternal life. You believe in me, and though you die the earthly life, that is not the end. Because earth is not the end. You continue to live in me. And that, those are the words that Jesus spoke to Martha Mazie on April 11th. And as is written in Matthew 25, 23, we can hear Jesus saying to Martha, as he welcomed her into the kingdom. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We understand that Martha Mazik is now with God and that she has received the crown of righteousness given to the faithful servants of God. But what about the rest of us left behind? What do we believe about Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life? Have we all accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives? Will we be able to welcome Jesus when the grim reaper death comes and knocks at our door? I would say if we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior and he comes to our homes and offers us eternal life with him, then we will have no fear of receiving our eternal reward. At that time, though I'm afraid that some of us may not be ready, some seated in the sanctuary will not have made their peace. They will not have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. Some may be still sitting at the grave of a loved one, mourning the loss of that person. Others may be busy holding on to grudges about some unresolved issues they had with a deceased loved one or a family member or a neighbor or a coworker or somebody else. Will we be engaged in a debate about the way to handle the property left behind, which friends should be given an opportunity to make remarks at the homegoing service? Will those be the things that will be on our minds when Jesus comes and knocks at our doors? The choice of life is before all of us, the choice of eternal life. But in order to accept Jesus' offer of eternal life, we must be willing to let go of the earthly things and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. Nobody can do that for anyone seated here but you. You must respond to that small voice of Jesus He's standing at the door and knocking. He's inviting you in. He's asking you to accept him. He won't break in like thieves do that we read about and that we hear on the latest breaking news, but he will come into your heart peacefully and he offers and brings to each of us the ability to have life eternal in his kingdom. Beloved, choose ye this day to believe in Jesus who is the resurrection, and the life. In the name of the Father, who sent his only begotten Son, who reigns eternally, and with whom Sister Martha Mazik rests now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. celebrate the Lord on today for that word. That was a marvelous, marvelous As we prepare to close this celebration, we're going to ask um, Dr. Hargrove to be prepared to come and bring us our benediction. Um, after she does so, we will turn this over to the funeral services, and we will follow their direction. Um, the internment will take place at National Memorial Park in Falls Church. Those who were able to attend, we would ask that you would line up and follow the directions of those who would lead us there. 
And so with that, we're going to ask if um, Dr. Hargrove would come back and give us our benediction. And now, beloved, let us look to God, the author and finisher of our faith, and unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to receive you before his throne with everlasting glory to the one wise God who sent his only begotten son, Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. To him be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen, 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 amen. and amen. And I have uh, been advised that um, for family members that will be leaving to go to the graveside committal service, there are bags out for you to pick up to take uh, for lunch. So we will follow the direction of 